again to our YouTube listeners and viewers, we, we just thank you for being a part of what we're doing. We're just so grateful to you. We continue to encourage you to subscribe to this uh, station so that when we come up, you'll be notified. And again, we thank you for being a part of what we're doing. And may God bless you. Oh, somebody tell me what's wrong with the people today. Oh, somebody tell me what's wrong with the people today. Oh, somebody tell me what's wrong with the people today. Oh, somebody. We welcome you to World Class Sunday School. Just a delight and a pleasure to be with you on, on, this, on this day. And we're going to continue in our studies for, for our fall quarter. And we are, we're talking about covenants with God. And in our first unit, we're looking at signs of God's covenants. And we've looked at, uh, so far, two signs, the rainbow in our first lesson. In our second lesson, we looked at circumcision. And today we're going to look at uh, the Sabbath observance. And that's the title of our lesson. Today we'll be coming from Exodus chapter 31, verses 12 through 18. We have, today we have uh, three outlines that, that we're going to use as a guide in our lesson today in, in the Sabbath, Sabbath observance. The first outline we're going to look at is Sabbath regulations. That's Exodus 31, verses 12 and 13. The second outline is Sabbath rejection. Exodus chapter 31, verses 14 through 16. And then the third and final outline, Sabbath rationale. And that's uh, Exodus 31 verses 17 through 18. And uh, so we, we're just uh, here, here we're looking at uh, the Sabbath observance. And, and we're going to see the Sabbath observance as a sign between God and the Israelites showing that he had, he had uh, distinguished the children of Israel from all other people. And God set this day apart to let them know that they were chosen by him for his service. And so with that in mind, we'll just go look at, uh, at our first outline, which is going to be the Sabbath regulation. And we're going to read verses 12 and 13. Verse 12 says, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that do it sanctify you. And, and we know that this is this is a time when Moses has come before God to, to get the law that will regulate the, act, the way of the Israelites. And, and here, uh, well, at, at the Ten Commandments as we know it, has uh, been given to Moses at this time. But, but here, God is, is really setting the tone for the Israelites to hear, we see him uh, saying to Moses that he's going to uh, want, want Moses to tell the children of Israel that the Sabbath day is instituted. And he said it is a sign between me and you throughout your generation. And we, we had stated earlier that these signs that God is, uh, that these covenants 
that God is making between Israel and his, and between he and Israel, the sands are to, is a visual of the commitment that, that he's making. And here, he's, he's making, he's setting aside a day of, of observance. Uh, and here in, in verse 12, we see the command concerning the Sabbath day. But the actual, actual uh, law was given back in Exodus 20, chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. If you go back and read that, you'll see that the commandment was given to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. But in here in Exodus 31, 12, and 13, we're looking at uh, the Lord reiterating, uh, reiterating the command. And he says here, verily my Sabbath shall be kept. God's people was to treat the, the Sabbath differently from other days of the week. And, and it was a day to observe. And we're going to see how God instructed them to go about observing the Sabbath day. Here he just, he's reiterating the command that he had already given back in Exodus 20. Uh, verses 8 through 11. Uh, and this would, would set, uh, set the tone for Israel that, that they are being set apart for, for God, for his service. And, th and this, uh, separ this setting apart would distinguish them from other nations. And we know that, that, that Israel were God's chosen people. He had chosen them to be a, a nation that would represent him to the other nations, and they were where they were to live according to God's precepts and rules and regulations, to inspire the other nations, uh, uh, and let the other nations know who God really, really was, and and so this observance would would set them apart from from the other nations, and so here in, in if you look in verse thirteen. We'll see the purpose uh, of the Sabbath, why, why God is instituting this. And verse 13 says, he, he, told to, he was uh, speaking to Moses and told Moses to speak to Israel and, and uh, say unto them that ye shall keep the Sabbath day, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord that do it sanctify you. And he said that the reason, the purpose for this, this uh, sign, the sign between me and you, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctified you. And the Sabbath was the sign of the covenant between Moses and God. It was a weekly reminder to Israel that God had chosen them as his own, and they were to serve him in that manner. And so that, you know, that's the purpose. That's why God instituted the Sabbath to, to, uh, to Israel, to set them apart from other nations that, that he might use them for his service. And, and this word uh, sanctified, and that's exactly what it, what it means is to be set apart. And we, as believers in Christ, we are set apart, or sanctified, for, for that purpose. God has chosen us. He has, he has given his son that we might be free of our, our sins and iniquities. And, and we are sanctified by God, or set apart by God for God's service. And this was this was the purpose of of the observance of the Sabbath day. Okay, and so that pretty much covers uh, the first outline, the regulations. Now we're going to move to into the second por portion, uh, second outline of our lesson, Sabbath rejection, and that's uh, Exodus thirty-one. We're going to look at verses 14, 15, and 16. 
So verse 14, it says, Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. And verse 16 says, Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual, uh, perpetual covenant. Here, here you know, uh, when, you, when we look at how God is instructing uh, Israel through the giving of the law, it's, a, it's God's way of, of really embracing the Israelites and letting them know that to him they are special and, and they have been chosen as his, as his special people. And God is, is really, this is God's way of taking care of the children of Israel. And here, here uh, in this uh, second outline, we, we look at, at the, uh, the rejection of the Sabbath day. Uh, and it says, it says, you shall keep the Sabbath day to do no work. And those who, who do work on the Sabbath, and, and here we see, we see a strict uh, 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 penalty for those who defile or does not observe the Sabbath day. No work was to be done on the Sabbath. It was to be a holy day for the Israelites, for th their servants, even for foreigners who lived in their house and their animals. To do any work would break or defile the commandment. And a strict commandment, uh, this, this uh, a strict, this commandment carried a strict penalty of death. And that's how serious it, this was to observe uh, a day for, God, for the Lord. And it says very plainly, very clearly here, it says, it says uh, anyone that defiled it shall surely be put to death. That, that was a, that was a, a, strict, a strict penalty for not observing the uh, the Sabbath day, and in the sixth day, six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of, the, of rest. And, and, and what God is saying here is that uh, in, in the six days uh, apart from the Sabbath, uh, those are the days to do the work or wh whatever you had to, had to be done, but that seventh day was a special day that was set aside to to observe, and, and it's a sign of the a covenant that God is making, that He has set Israel apart to be His chosen people, to be example to other nations. And if if any of them were to reject, or or defile, or disobey uh, this the observance of the Sabbath, Sabbath day was to be put to death. Okay, and then it says, it says, holy to the Lord, whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. And then verse 16 says, wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. And he, here we know that uh, we know that, that the Sabbath was a, 
was to be observed, and it was a covenant made under the old, old in the Old Testament under the old covenant. And even today, the Jew, the Orthodox Jews, observe the Sabbath day as the day as uh, observe Saturday as the Sabbath day. But under the new covenant, that we are we are under the new covenant. And we observe Sunday as, as the Lord's day, the first day of the week, because uh, that's the day that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. And, and <clears throat> that's why we, we observe the first, the first day of the, of the, of the week. And just looking back here uh, at verses 17 and 18, the basis for the Sabbath, we see in 17, in verse 17. And then, for the six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And that, that really takes us up to, to the uh, third outline in our lesson, the Sabbath uh, rationale and what this uh, portion of our scripture is doing is explaining why God felt it necessary to uh, institute a Sabbath day and we look at verses uh, verses 17 through 18 verse, uh, verse 17 it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For on the sixth day the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And then verse 18 says, And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tablets of testimony, tablets of stone written with the finger of God. We talk, we're talking about the basis for, for the Sabbath and why, and, and we, we saw in verse 17 uh, how, how the Lord instituted the sixth day and, and why he did it. And God was his own example uh, as a basis for, for observing the Sabbath day because the Bible tells us that God, in six days God created the heaven and earth. And on the seventh day, he rested. And here the, the Sabbath uh, was a, was a, bind, a binding, binding uh, on the, under the Old Testament, it, the Sabbath was binding. And under the New Testament, we observed the first day of the week. So, so the, the day of Christ was uh, the day that Christ was resurrected was on the first day of the week, and that's why we observe, uh, we count Sunday as being the Lord's day. And, and some, some scriptures to support that is John 20, 19. And when you get a chance, you can read that, and also 1 Corinthians 6 and 2. Okay, and so, so here... And we, we let us let us not lose focus on on why we observe the Lord's Day. It's a time uh, for those of us uh, who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Uh, it's a time for rest and a, a time to be refreshed. And as we go through our Christian walk, uh, we we need a time set apart for us to to rest and be refreshed. Because uh, really, if we are, we are living uh, and trying to live according to the will of God, sometimes we, we're going to get stressed out. Sometimes we're going to get tired. Sometimes, uh, you know, uh, we're going to feel the weight of the world on our shoulders. And we need a time uh, set apart for us to, to, to be refreshed and, and re-energized and, and and so, so that we can go on and, and do the things that the Lord has called us to do. And not only for the rest, but, but for remembering. And it's a time for us to reflect back on 
who God really is. And this is really why God was uh, setting this uh, sign or uh, this covenant with Israel so that they could really realize and know who God is. We need time to think and reflect back on what God has done in our lives and, and who he really is and what he really means to us. And, and that those things that will keep us in a closer walk with the Lord. And, and, and uh, on, on this observance of, of, of the time of rest and reflection of remembering, Israel could, could think back and remember how God had brought them out of Egypt and how he had opened up the Red Sea and how he had protected them uh, as they go through their journey in the wilderness. And, and the same for us. Uh, we, we need time to reflect and remember what God has done for us, what he's doing in our lives, and how he's brought us through trials and tribulations. Uh, and, and we need that time. And when we, when we reflect back on God, what God has done for us, then we won't have any problem praising and worshiping him, praising him for what he's done and worship, worshiping him uh, for who he is. And God, God knows, he knows that that time would be valuable for us. And that's why uh, it's, it's such, uh, and God made, uh, made it plain that it would, the, the Sabbath day was to be observed. And if, if you fail to observe it, if you defile it, then there was a strict penalty. But we, but we need to keep in mind the, the, uh, why God instituted a, a day of, of rest and observance. And we need to take heed and make it a part of our service to the Lord because it's only going to help us in our walk, walk with Christ. And that's, that's what we need. We need. Sometimes we need assurance. Sometimes we need to know that, that what we are doing, uh, that God... God is there with us. And, and also here, when you look at uh, the, the last portion of, of this uh, outline, verse 18, it says, And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communion with him upon Mount Sinai, two tablets of testimony, tablets of stone written with the finger of God. And we know that these are, are the stones that contain the Ten Commandments, but God also gave other laws uh, in, that would pertain to the children of Israel. And also, uh, if, if we go way back and remember that God said, told Moses as a, as a sign when he sent him to Egypt to bring out the children of Israel, that he would come back to Mount Sinai. And this is where God had called Moses up to distribute or give him the law for, for the children of Israel. And I just, you know, these, these lessons are really designed to show us God's love and concern for, for Israel. And also, also to teach us that God is not just a, a God who sits high and, and not really have any compassion on his people. And that's, uh, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the Israelites felt that God just had no compassion, that he was just a stern God. But, but when you look and see how God um, would go through and do these things for, for Israel, it just shows his love for, for his people. And, and for us, we, we need encouragement and we need to know that, that the Lord loves us. And so when we, when we uh, observe, uh, when we recognize what God is doing in order to, for us to, to be blessed, it, it just lets us know that, that how much God loves us. And even though, even though this uh, Sabbath observance was given under the Old Testament, it still, ha and, and we observe not, not the same day, but we have a, a day of observing God.
and 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 we should hold hold fast to to the principle uh, of this observance that God has given. And in our days, the first day of the week, the day that we uh, recognize and observe as being the Lord's day, should be a, a holy day. But not only the first day of the week, since uh, Christ has gone through what he has gone through for us, every day should be a day of observance for us. But especially, especially the day that we have set aside as the Lord's day. It should, should be special to us, and we should treat it as such, and, and, and not just do uh, in and everything, but make it a time of rest and remembrance. And that's, that's what God would have us to do. And I just, I, I just encourage us on today to uh, look at, look at uh, what we are doing on the Lord's Day and ask yourself, is what I'm doing, is that pleasing to the Lord? And we should, we should be uh, doing things that we know that God is going to be pleased with. And so setting a day aside to observe the God and the things that, that he has uh, called us to do, to the, the time to rest and remember, we should, we should observe on that day. I just uh, I thank God for just opening up his, his word to us and making his promise uh, relevant to, to those of us who uh, have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and that we might be an encouragement to those who have not uh, accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. It, there's a benefit in and, and serving God. And if you haven't opened up your heart to him, I encourage you to do so today. Be a part of God's family so that you may enjoy the, the blessings and the benefits that God affords his chosen people. And we are his chosen people. And I just thank God for being a, a part of, of the family. And Lord, we just thank you for this Day and thank you for this time and thank you for allowing us to look into your word to see how you have laid out the benefits for us and we just thank you for it and give you all the praise and glory we love you we praise you we magnify you it's in Jesus name we pray and give you thanks always again friends we thank you for joining on uh, joining us today and we look forward to having you on our next time. So until then, may God richly bless and keep you, is our prayer. Tell me what's wrong with the people today. Oh,